Thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to talk. This is my first uh, G4G, and I'm uh, having a wonderful, wonderful time. I'm going to talk about um, demonstrating math with triangles. These are all going to be on the computer. Actually, I have no risk skills whatsoever. Um, so uh, why did I even get into this? Well, um, they illustrate interesting mathematics, and that's always a good thing to do. But also, I found them just to be mesmerizing kinetic art. Um, the, these, uh, Bill Gosper developed most of these ideas many years ago, and, and part of what drove me was to reproduce these because I really wanted to see them again. And uh, they were done on a machine that really doesn't exist anymore. So um, what do I mean by a carefully uh, draw, drawn triangle? Um, basically, we, we, we want to draw these things in a, just in a very well-defined way so that we can seam them up. The way I like to think about it is I think of, if you think of each pixel as a square rather than a dot on the grid, think of it as a square and say we're going to just define that, that each um, triangle owns the pixel if that center point is within that triangle and um, we just define clear rules about how we can do that. Turns out we can do that in floating point two and we don't have to worry about it as long as the rules are clear. We basically can just then go and mark all these rows, and uh, we're going to turn the analog, essentially sort of the analog floating point triangle, into a um, set of pixels. And um, as, I, as I mentioned before, we can seam these up perfectly. So what we can do is we can take any solid, we can decompose it into triangles, and we can then make sure that when we draw those triangles, every pixel inside that solid will be hit once and only once. So um, to do this, we're going to treat the um, the pixels not as independent colors as is done a lot these days. We're going to treat them as indexes into some sort of color table. And um, so, for example, um, oh, they seem to be filled with 13s. How odd. Um, <laughs> so the, the, uh, for space filling, um, it, we're going to do this sort of space filling thing. We, we actually, for the animations, we like the things to be reversible so we can animate forward and back. We can do this with exclusive or, but you know, that turns a bit on, turns a bit off, turns on, off. But we can also use add because that essentially conserves information. So, uh, and if we take the sign from the hand in this of the triangle as determined by its determinant, uh, then um, we, can, we can just draw some nice things and things erase and add and subtract as they should. Um, so if we go clockwise, we add, we get those ugly 14s, and then we get the 13s back and we go counterclockwise. So let's take, actually take a look at this. Okay. So this is actually, um, here we see we're drawing from the center. Uh, we're, we're using the center pixel here. We're drawing, we're adding. If we go backwards, we, we subtract. And it'll go back to, to black or zero in this case. Um, and of course, it just it seems up perfectly. That would be kind of embarrassing if it didn't at this point. Um, and uh, you, so, but, but one of the interesting things about this algorithm is that we can also do um, it doesn't really matter where we draw from, and it turns out that this is a sort of graphics kind of algorithm for drawing any sort of arbitrary closed curve. So if I move the drawing point to the lower right, then I can actually, um, I, I fill this in. You see how it carefully draws stuff outside of it, but then it erases it as it makes the complete circle. And it's going around, and it's doing the same thing. It's adding one every time around the loop in the, in the circle. So, um, okay. So, um, nope, there we go. Okay. So, now let's jump on the Fourier series for a second. So how can we use all this, this triangle mechanism to maybe demonstrate Fourier series? Well, we can, we can look at a Fourier series as defining these circles. We have um, a set of, set of circles, that each consecutive one drawn at the, you see we have the point on the radius here. We're going to use that as the center for the next circle and so on and so forth. They have independent phases and, and frequencies of which they spin around and radii. And um, we, when, we, when we do a step, we, we take some delta theta. It doesn't really matter. We, we, some step size. We step them. And what we get in here is this quadrilateral. And of course, we can divide that up into two triangles. And now we, have, we happen to have this nice, careful triangle drawer, which will allow us these, all these things will just naturally seam up for us. And so if we actually go see what that looks like, then this is actually a a little bit somewhat uninteresting, um, but this is the three rotor case. And this is a particular set of coefficients that generates something that's kind of close to a triangle. And I, I believe these, are these are coefficients are generated programmatically. So you can ask Bill Gosper for the actual underlying Fourier math behind this. But the, the neat thing is that if I just take this up to 
um, a larger number of coefficients, so rather than three, we'll take it up to oh, 95 in this case, you can see that it draws a pretty nice triangle with pretty straight lines, or a nice, yeah, triangle with pretty straight lines, and we can see what's happening around the, um, the corners here. We see the Gibbs phenomena illustrated, that it just has a sort of hard time, takes a long time for it to turn around. Uh, to, but then it actually makes the straight part pretty quickly, and it's a, I think it's a really nice illustration and an interesting bit of graphic. seconds. Okay, so um, we'll, let's just uh, jump on to the final thing, which relates to the uh, T-shirt that I'm wearing, which is uh, worked on by um, Nancy Blockman, put, put the gift together, this is part of a gift, and you can get a link to the code that actually runs uh, as part of that, and this is, just quickly, I will show you. So this, is, um, uh, this isn't exactly the same shape, but it's kin to it. It's a series of coefficients provided by Bill Gosper and, and his colleague, uh, Julian Ziegler-Hunts, um, and it draws this nice shape. And if I let it go, it would draw a triangle. But what I really want to do is go up to 6,000 coefficients. And what you'll see is that it draws these little sub-triangles. It's because it's a fractal shape. So as the more coefficients you add, the more detail you get. So anyway, uh, feel free, you'll, if, if you have the gift exchange, you'll see a link to the website. This is all JavaScript. It'll run on a browser, it'll run on a phone, and run on a tablet, wherever. I'd love it if you'd uh, play with it. It's fun. It's interesting. Thank you.